He's on the apps. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He's on Raya. He's on Raya. Oh, he he I got to do that. Raya. He, um, he's on Raya right now. Bobby? I think so. Yeah, he talks about it on there. the podcast. He's so available, exclusive. ladies. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby Lee's on Raya. Get on there. Same Remember right? he called you? A little bit. He called you uh, a different name. Remember? We did his podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. <laughs> what did he call you? Okay. Not Jason. Yep. <laughs> I I mean I called his I called Kalila Michaela. So but which read it's a different name loved. though. It's a little harder. Yeah. Jason's not that hard. Yeah. I'm having a good I'm having an easy time with it. <laughs> yeah, he said hello to his stepson and was like, Jason? And he was like, No. And I was just standing behind him and then he was like, Hey, how's it going? And then on the podcast he called me something else. Look, Sorry, we we're all, friends we, now. Yeah, we yeah. taught him how to ollie. It's all good. Did he you showed really? me his did. butthole. Yeah. And he oh, showed him his not, butthole. That's, a, that's not much. Right. <laughs> I, so Don't heard. take that personally. <laughs> <laughs> I did talk it as, a, as, a, as an olive branch. <laughs> oh, my God. You're absolutely right. <laughs> that's an olive branch. That's a Bobby Lee olive branch. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Hall. Hey, Neil Brennan's here. Yeah. Oh, we're hey, talking about buddy. you. We're not talking about Bobby Lee anymore. Yeah, no, I'm dumb. That's enough. <laughs> we're say, boys. We're happy to have you. It's nice to be here. I feel like um, when it's two against one, you have to think, could, well, I, could I fight these guys? Yeah, well, it's, it's hawk versus wolf. It's not hawk and yeah, we wolf fight each other. Oh, you guys you. fight each other, right? Yeah. So I, I watch. Yeah. Yep, it's um, like a watering hole where I'm watching a hawk fight a wolf. Sure, or you can, you know, you can choose to support one or the other. It's up to Wait, you. Wait, even if the one of them's losing? Well, I, I need to know that if you win, it, it could turn. No on one ever wins point. here. Could no one ever wins. Point. He's really right. I give you like a chopper energy. Oh, you know Chopper Reed. I mean, I know of them as yeah. an Australian. You and I are physically sort of in the same weight class. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. Whereas he, I feel like you'd, you'd curb stomp me or something. I'm not a curb stomping guy. I know no. I, I give off that like vibe. Yeah. 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 But I'm pretty friendly. Okay. Great. I'll show, and I'll show you my butthole if it comes down to it. That would be an olive branch. <laughs> I'd be like, wow, he's reaching out. I, as we've learned. I'm going to dec decline that offer, but thank you. Have right. you, no. how, how much nudity have you seen of each other? <laughs> uh, I, no one can avoid Jason's nudity. Let's put that Wait, way. <laughs> what? I didn't know, oh, man. I did. God damn it! What did you you let it out? Uh, he 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 does. Let's just let's just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. I feel like there's a good amount of nudity in the in your world. In like oh, in like skateboarding, sk yeah, jackass. Yeah. No, there isn't. Stuff. Oh, I would say isn't that, that just the, jackass? Like I would skateboarders say, don't. In the days of yore, yes. I mean, that was always a, you know, skaters were were pretty um, outgoing. What's hilarious about and you is hilarious. there was nothing before you. So it's like days of yore. It's like. Oh, there's plenty it's before all me. It's days of, but not much. I mean, there um, is. There, there's a guy, uh, let's put it this way, Bill Weiss, who yeah. um, was, is. is uh, he did naked 540s. Yes. One time he right. did a naked 540 like, with a legendary Jetta skater. Blaster. Started his own company. Like he, he's he's funny dude. He's a legit he was, skater. Le, he was notorious for doing McTwist naked. And when I say naked, I mean like no shoes, nothing. Yeah, great. He Which, did it with a ghetto blaster on his naked. shoulder one time, butt naked. Yeah. Yep. He's a great guy. Shout so, out to yes, Bill. Yes, those things existed, and then of course Jackass. Uh, raise the level. <laughs> you, but you, I want you to feel old. You feel old, I'm right? super old, yeah. Okay, great. But I'm saying like there was wow. very little. Thanks for showing I up. Just very, <laughs> there was very little skate culture. But I feel like, man, not like you started it, but like it, you're like the Moses. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. You know what I mean? Like um, you're, there was like God, I don't know who God is. And then you were like the, came down. I, I just, is Tony Elva God? Uh, I well, Jay, yeah, either or Jay Adams or there was Peralta. another there was yeah. another era yeah. that were legendary, but skateboarding wasn't legendary to the mainstream. Like Tony was the first person to be yeah. for sure the best guy in skateboarding, 
And then skateboarding got big, and it was like, so who's I, the best here? And right. it was, it and I think there was a shift, though. It would I would say late '90s, early 2000s, where skating before that was only for and about skaters. If you like skating, then you were a hardcore skater. There was no leisure skaters. No one was doing it, or or there was no there was no fan base for skating. Okay, unless you were truly in it and doing it actively oh god and then like at the some only people point, that came were other skaters basically. and then at yeah. some point like in the 99 2000 era that changed so there were fans of skating yeah. loved the the culture of it the attitude of it the diy aspect the the fashion the music everything and then they didn't even necessarily skate. Are you looking for a delicious and nutritious snack that packs a real protein punch? Crack into a good source of protein with tasty, healthy, wonderful pistachios. Each one ounce serving of wonderful pistachios contains six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value. Pistachios are known for their protein power, fiber, and better for you, unsaturated fats for a combination that may help keep you feeling fuller longer. It's one of the highest protein nuts out there. Wonderful pistachios come in a variety of flavors and sizes. Perfect for enjoying with your family and friends or taking them with you on the go <laughs> during your summer adventures. Sick defense, dude. Whether you're dropping off your kiddos or running between meetings, fuel up with a healthy and tasty snack. Wonderful pistachios will be your new go-to snack. Check out wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more about how these little green wonders can power up your day. You know what's interesting about you that and again, this we'll talk about me in a second. I can't wait. You're gonna love it. Um, is that you seem you seem so like like a s like a good like you don't seem like skatey values, but I but knowing you or like but especially having watched the documentary, I was like, oh, you're as much a skater as anybody. I hope you just so. look like no, no no, but I'm saying you you're obviously like the avatar for skating, you're amazing at it. But I'm saying the attitude, the thing that you said, like the DIY attitude part of it, you just look like you're the administrator. <laughs> Do you know fair. what I mean? Yeah, I guess. And but yeah. you're just as yeah. like gnarly as everybody. He's the gnarliest. Yeah. But that, yeah, but he did seem, like, you look like, oh, that guy. Like, if I was playing, say, uh, which Tony one Hawk is skating, yeah. like, you'd be, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I'd want to get to him. Yeah, yeah he's he's <laughs> yeah. so good, he didn't need to, like, put on the, look at me, I'm a, I'm a crazy guy suit. <laughs> okay, so that's what tattoos he's like, are. He's like I, the Mike Tyson character you reach and punch out. Yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah from the that's what you yeah. gotta beat Ellis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, but you seem like you're like the first like board. I get you, and then I, I'm yeah, like, but it. one yeah. day I'll That's be Jason. That's funny. I've never actually heard it put like that. But yeah, you're, but yeah. you get a piece of every copy, so it's good. Don't <laughs> worry about it. Don't worry. About it. You're gonna be fine. Uh, you're gonna make it through this. Speaking um, of getting a piece, oh, uh, it's right. <laughs> yeah, go on, please. Uh, no, I was gonna talk about when we met because yes. we met, and I recognize you as working on Chappelle show yes um we met and, in 2004 yeah in Miami the first right time, Miami yes and I we my at, life was so insane I didn't remember it very clearly I barely I remembered mean, meeting you and I was like I played the video I was like a fan and then you were like hey we met before and I had I barely because it was it was at the VMAs it was, it was at the VMAs yeah Pharrell had a party it's back when Pharrell was a musician before he was the head of LV, Louis Vuitton. The, the designer of the worst shoes ever invented. Which ones? Ice cream. Oh, yeah. These are Pharrell Adidas, and they're very comfortable. They figured it out, but yeah. do you don't remember ice cream? I, do, I, don't, I didn't buy any. Yep. They weren't good? They are a bit clowny. They appeared shitty, or they uh, They had shitty. a lot of colors. <laughs> yeah, they did. They had, they had an audience. Yeah. Look, I think that dude's cool. The shoes were real bad. That was a bad idea. <laughs> look, look, take nothing away from the guy. He's made yeah. a lot of great stuff. Everything and, else. And, and like, spot also, on. Like, he's, he was it. cutting his teeth. Yeah. And now he's head of the one of the biggest brands. Yeah. So. We have we all have duds. People didn't yep. love the new the new line for LVMH. Said it was <laughs> they said the Louis Vuitton was a little Minecrafty. That's what mm. I was told. 
Well, Minecraft is huge. I, I've got kids. Cut to so. it. You'll, the people get a big kick out of it at home. But you're going to love this joke. <laughs> Bang. Minecraft. Yeah. They'll do that. <laughs> Not my joke. So we met at a party in Miami. Uh, and and uh, it was and then... yeah, so it was VMAs crazy. It was chaos. The whole town was taken over by you know that's when video, the, the MTV Video Music Awards was the biggest thing yeah. ever. Um, and so we got invited to the party. My friend Greg was there. He's the one who saw you. Yep. Um, and he's like, I'm pretty sure it's you know Brennan from Chappelle Show. Yeah. And you're massive Chappelle Show fans, still are obviously. And so then we approached you, and you were sitting there, and it was just everyone just partying and. You know, it's, it's Miami scene and you're just sitting there. And so we ended up just having a super quiet conversation with you off, yeah. off of uh, outside of the, the frenzy. You know what narky energy I have? Listen to this. I've never been offered cocaine in my entire life. <laughs> I was going to ask that question. I'm a, I'm a comedian and a commercial yeah. director. Do you have any idea the level of narky energy you got to have? Yeah. Never. I've barely do it in front seen of you? it. You've I've barely, barely seen, it. seen it. Anytime I've seen cocaine, I walked in on it. Yeah, and they were trying to put it away because like, you came in. It's yeah. not what you think. Yeah. I'm not a I don't I'm obviously super cool, but I don't I don't I don't like uh I don't get and the fucked up no, thing I, is honestly, I would absolutely do cocaine. No if given the opportunity. <laughs> okay, that's I'll, where we differ. Because I have the same experience. Rarely have I ever even seen it. I know it's around. I always yeah. really used to seen it. put the cocaine away when he was coming. Where, but but I, yeah, yeah, but I know, and where I can did, just tell by the store up here. I yeah. did, whatever I could do, I'd be like, oh no, Burbank's coming, sash the bumps. But uh, yeah, I've seen that on the nostril for sure. But same, but I was just like, nah, I'm not. But but I, if it was offered to me, I never did. I never did it. Yeah, never. Never. I did hey, it. Man. I did this once. You did a gummer. Yeah, I did a gummer. I don't even know what it's called. A yeah. gummer. I did a gummer once, yeah. and I think I snorted it once. No, I and I gotta say, it was. Wait, you think you you did a gummer I'm and then you think sure, you did well, a bomb? There are two different incidents. There's, yeah, there's the gummer, of course, the famous gummer. Yeah, of, <laughs> the, the, of, the stuff of legend. Of Everybody 1999, knows about that. The 1999 gummer. Yeah. Uh, I did a reverse gummer. I make my own. I do cocaine, but skateboard moves. It right. didn't work. It's a con joke construct. It doesn't. You got work. it. Get out of it, guys. Get out of here. Uh, and then I snorted it once. I the one time I did it was. I did a Comedy Central hour stand-up special in 2000, maybe 13, and I did it the night after because I thought if I die, it'll be funny. Right. Like if I do a Nef I do a Comedy Central special and then I do cocaine once. Yeah. And die. No one's funny. getting that nuance though. No, I no don't one think would that's understand. The yeah, people wouldn't understand first time cocaine years right. Neil Brennan did a gummer once, but yeah. not and. I wanted to be like Len Bias, where I did it once. Well, they said he did it once, but who knows? How was it? I gotta say, thanks for asking. Um, I it was fine. Yeah, but not it, worth it. It wasn't. Again. It see, my first thought was, I don't know why this is popular. Yeah, lucky you. Yeah, wish yeah. I had thought that. How, what did you think? Hell yeah! You got any more? And how long did that last? A decade, maybe. <laughs> Wait, a decade? Sure, sure. Yeah. Why not? Well, yeah. And did it hurt your life? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I can attest. How, how'd you get out of it? Uh, children. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, my girlfriend got pregnant, and I was like, oh. Oh, all right. Definitely well, probably I'll stopped doing that. And then yeah. when it came out, that was like... Uh, I got hit in the face with like uh react like react like grow the baby up. what came out when the baby came out of the the stomach because yep. she got cut out which okay. was also horrific I was like whoa looked like a shark attack like it was full open blood everywhere and I'm like man she's gonna die and then I'm like wait that's my baby it what was, the fuck that's a lot of information at once yeah, and then she couldn't breastfeed because she had to get a blood transfusion so I was with the baby in hospital for a couple of days. In if you're just joining us, this is one of the top natal podcasts. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Wolf we're all Hawk, to, yeah, we're all just. But uh, it's all about medical about, experience. Yeah, medical yeah. and. Ba but it changed me. I couldn't do coke anymore. Like you just were like something in your body changed. You just just no seemed like if I got really out of it, then I couldn't help the baby. 
Like, what if the baby yeah. needed me right yeah. now and it's I just motivation. did a bunch of bumps? You know, how long will that last? The coke? No, well, that thing of like, I need to help the baby. At a certain point, when they turn fifteen, you're gonna be like, I think I can do coke. Yeah. Well, now they don't think, need I me. Think it's time I can. Yeah, they, but now I'm too old, old to do it. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. No, it's he, just he cleaned not up his good... act. What did you say? He cleaned up his act. Got it. and yeah. is it? What happens if you do it when you're old? I would think that I would have a heart attack and die. Got it. Yeah. And I like being alive. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, it's a great. It's, great. it's overrated, and I'm not all. I don't need to hide anymore. When I was younger, I was running away from my reality. Now, wasn't I your like, reality pretty cool though? Yeah, but much. I had a rough childhood. I think I was doing a lot of drugs to not face any of that. Got it. Yeah. Me and Tony, it was easy for us. How do you be? <laughs> oh, how easy. are you a comedian that doesn't have any great trauma? Drug? No, I have fucking tons of trauma. I, that's what my whole act is about. It's right. like just problems. No, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say like how like you're in that scene. You never dabbled in any of that. You were like a big I drinker don't or like anything. Weed. Like yeah. I don't like weed. Me and Dave wrote Half Baked. I don't. He just he did all the smoking weed. Like I just don't like it. Alcohol. My dad was an alcoholic. Eh. The other thing about stand or being like my kind of personality, whatever alcohol does for people, I'll just do anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, it'll make me disinhibited. It'll make me take risk. It'll, yeah. it's like, I'll just do that. Just do it anyway. I'll do it anyway. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I'd like to C -section. not be condoning that behavior. Yeah. No, it's not good. Not a good idea. Not good. Not yeah. a good idea. I can tell you for sure. From all those experience. things you just said, they turn the opposite very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. But, and then it's the worst thing ever. What have you, and what have you really, you didn't, that was never no. really a thing. No. It you was had more kids I, soon, though. What's that? You didn't you have kids early? I did, yeah, yeah, and and but you were on the road, and I it, I was just never I I saw I saw so many people my age and and with the same sort of career trajectory that lost it because they were partying, yeah, whether it be drinking or, or otherwise, and and I was watching that going, I'm not. Was that skating as much... was always so paramount to anything else that I was doing, and including personal relationships. Yeah. So, you know, the, to a fault, like I was so obsessed with it, but it also kept me out from the party scene. Was part of that competitive? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, well, I'm not Yeah, because the only way to succeed when I was young is was to compete. You, yeah. there was no, you couldn't be a YouTube star. You yeah. couldn't be, you know, you could be an influencer. You had to compete. That's how you showed up. You were up. sort of the first, influ I mean, you know what I mean? Like you, it, what you were doing was sort of influencing in a weird way. Right. I, it, yeah, it, I think that that didn't come until the video era of skateboarding. Yeah, um, when when it was more like we could show what we do and show the best of what we do because we have the opportunity to fall. Yeah, you know, in, in competition, you don't fall. You can't fall. You runs over. You're not going to place. Yeah, but when we got into the video mode, it was more like, look at this is all the best things that we've ever done. Some of it we've never done before, and we've captured it on video. Oh, again. And we're sharing it with the world. So, so you were, but and we you, also got, we got in right at the era of VHS. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and then was, you could charge for personal appearances, so to speak. Yeah, but that wasn't much back then. Got it. We, in fact, we were. Discouraged. Did anybody make money off the videos? No. Like, did the Wait, person the who distributed? Getting, we did not get paid for bonds for videos. That's right. It did they all, make money off them? They did, but but their. Their angle on that was that you guys are going to sell so many more skateboards when this comes out with your name on it that it all it's all it all washes out. What was the and general? They were right, and now, you know what I mean. Like in hindsight, they were right. We were on top of the world. Once were the deals good for the the skate? As far for as the we board, knew, for sure. like royalties, it yeah. was like well, you I mean, look we, back we, and you go, "That's fair," or you look back and go, "Like it's bullshit." Uh, I can't. I, I, there's no way to look back and say it was bullshit. We we were making insane amounts of money. Um, if you look at what usually they pay royalties now or we pay royalties, it, it would be more. Now? It would be more now, yeah. Yeah. But there was so much so many other opportunities and auxiliary things that that came from all that. Like yeah. We couldn't, you know, we, we we were obviously young and ready to complain about anything. Ah. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we were bratty. Yeah. So we had that, but, but in hindsight, like it was all amazing. Well, yeah. yeah. You look back and you go like, 
it's I don't like saying like what you did was it, historic, we're, it, we're some historic, boy, historic, we were some it, boy band that there yeah. was a manager taking all the profits. Not at all. It was you guys were taking the profits and well, I mean we we the company did well too, but we did well. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or psychic. We're talking about our sponsor fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it? Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. It tastes more flavorful than I thought, and it feels very fresh. It's well-weighted, perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use the code WOLF. Save 10% off when you get your journey pack today that's try wolf so t-r-y-f-u-m dot com and then you use the code wolf and then you get 10 percent off and you can do it right now thank you bear for sponsoring our podcast their labor day sale is running now and you can get 35 percent off your purchase for a limited time check out the bear site for more details what is Bear Mattress, you might ask? It's a premium mattress designed to upgrade your sleep, improve your lifestyle and overall quality of life. And it's conveniently shipped to your door for free. Bear's Sleep Quiz matches you to the perfect mattress based on your body type and sleep preference. I personally am a side sleeper who likes a firm mattress. That's true. Based on my results, Bear matched me with their Elite Hybrid. I've had my mattress for a few weeks and I love it. I fall asleep faster and I wake up feeling refreshed. Bear delivers your mattress right to your door with free shipping in the US. The mattress comes rolled up in a box and it's easy to set up. There is a 120 night sleep trial to test the mattress out and ensure that you love it. It's pretty crazy how you take it out of the box and you just, it goes, yeah. turns into a mattress. Bear mattresses include a lifetime warranty and they're offering financing options and flexible payment plans. Bear's Labor Day sale is running now and you can get 35% off for a limited time, though you can always click the link below for 30% off. Just visit bearmattress.com slash hawkwolf. That's right, to get 30% off your new mattress with the code hawkwolf. Uh, you know how to spell that? Uh. H-A-W-K. W-O-L-F. Put some respect on it. And yep. he's... A, a skateboarder and the team the tour the the yeah you know, like they those guys were the best of the best when the bones brigade tour came everybody shit themselves and they went all the way around the around the world and he was the best guy on that team so it was like uh you know should he got money off the video yeah he should have for sure but all in all like his day-to-day -day life at that point it'd be pretty hard to find something to argue about it's like i'm flying around the world i'm making tons of money because back then the board royalties there was only like 20 people that had a board now yeah. there's hundreds we were just expected to do those tours too so yeah. we didn't even question it expected by who by, by, bones by, the, yeah. by the bones brigade yeah yeah and um, i remember uh the the going rate for a bones brigade member to go do a demo was 300 bucks anywhere in the point, world Anywhere in the Tokyo, world, you're getting doesn't bucks. matter, 300 bucks. Yeah, and and at one point I got kind of full of myself and complained to Stacy, like, Stacy, we can get more money. People are offering me $1,000 to go. Shelby's like, oh man, you can't do that. You're gonna price yourselves out of the market and no one's gonna want you guys to do demos going forward if you charge that much. <laughs> That's, he's quick. Do you, are you cool with Stacy? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what? What? How does he explain it now? What does? Was well, he... it's it's just a different beast now. Yeah. But back then it was more. Look, you go to these places, you go show up at a shop, skate in their parking lot. That shop in turn sells a shitload of Bones Brigade decks. You guys make money. That's yeah. how this works. 
Which is true. Which is true. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody we're, else. We're not. Of... We're not seeing. You know, we don't. We don't have that attitude of delayed gratification at the time of our lives. But it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. And you. Did, it's like, what else were you gonna do? Exactly. Yeah. What else were you gonna do? Other but let's talk not... about you. Yeah, yeah. No. Of course. Please. Enough about us. He's good at that. I know. No, I'm not even trying to. Defi- I just am genuinely curious about people's like lives and shit. Yeah, I mean, but but our audience kind of knows that story. Oh, all right. Good. <laughs> Great. Well, yeah, maybe not to that extent. I've never told the the our pricing. Back no, then. I love I love asking people um, about money. I and, really and that do. was all like, built under our contract. You're not supposed so, to, and I'm. But, but I was in our built under our contract. Where it was like, it. if you guys want us to provide insurance and other stuff, you are not going to just pay your royalties on your skateboards. You're contractually obligated to do these exhibitions yeah. that all sort of amortize out at 300 bucks each. So That's we were so funny. Were they seven days, like two a week? If we were on tour for five weeks, we were doing at least five demos a week. Did the money seem like, you're like, were you like, I'm making 1500 bucks? Like, nah, we were just, we were just in it. I mean, also we're, we're traveling the world. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, we got fans or right, meeting but were girls. You, so like, it, was it was exciting and you were just like, this is great. Yeah, it was It was uh, all kind of a dream. But at some point it got exhausting. Yeah. It was like, dude, don't we have a day off? We haven't had a day off in like four weeks. Yeah. Can and we, were guys like painkillers? And... No, it wasn't back then. Oh, no? All right, no, so it, it wasn't like the sports injury shit? It wasn't like wrestling. No, yeah. we didn't have the resources or the insurance. Couldn't afford Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> Not, nothing like that, no. Not at all. It's just people weren't stay like people that did the demo didn't stay up all night at the strip club. It was they like, didn't. It was just like younger. No. It was like a younger yeah. crew of athletes. Like the best of the best, they were still kids. So you're like Let's 19? put it this way: the, the 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 biggest talking to we ever got as the Bones Brigade team was, look, you guys, you know, we're all 16, 17, and it was like you guys can't be hanging out with girls that are underage. You're like, but we're but they're but they're our age. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it, I, I think there was some incident that happened. I wasn't part of it, but you don't know. Anything I think there about was it. an incident that happened that was like nothing could be. Was was like, I was a, I was very much asleep, and there were people that will corroborate that. Yeah. No, it was it was not it was not on my my. We had different crews coming in and out of got the tour. It, got so it, got it, it was got the it. crew before us. Yeah. Something happened. I think someone was underage, and they ended up going with the team to the next city. Great. So their parents are very worried. Sure. Understandably. So that's that's when we got our as a big parent talk. you get it, but as a as a as a cool guy, you're like, you coming or not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you want to be cool or what? I Let's get know. The, the, the meat of this thing. Um well, Let's get the meat of this podcast. Our, our first encounter was based on uh your connection with Dave. So how yep. did you how did you uh get working with Dave? In seventeen eighteen, I was going to NYU film school and work in the door to comedy club in new york so my brother's a comedian so um I mean, at age 17 18 i was yeah i was yeah. age 17 18 okay. um and the only other guy my age was dave um and it was like Dave, like the class was pretty impressive it was like dave was around louis ck was around john stewart was around wow ray romano was around like not mark Marin, sarah silverman not successful yeah. right none of them so it was it was uh a guy named david tell who's an amazing comic um so i was going to film school going like i like these i like these people better than film students i mean that's not saying much because film students are the worst but but they were they just seemed like oh this is louis ck made like a short film that i worked on when i was in school um in like 1992 and so then I just dropped out after your NYU. I also realized at NYU, like I'm, they're never gonna let me direct something if I, if I'm just like, yeah, I'm 21 and I'm from school. They're not gonna. I realized I would have to write something, so I started working at the comedy club and just kind of writing jokes, like little bits of jokes for people. Not doing stand up. No, I didn't do stand up till uh, like I was 32 or 33. How many years did you write for stand up before you? No way. Yeah. And you never had the urge. I did it once when I was 18. It wasn't good. I did it when I was 23. I was pretty good. I would do it. And then I'd be like, such a low impulse to want to perform. What a bunch of animals. 
And wow. Then, oh, and so then, that was your attitude that stopped yeah, well, you from I was, doing I was, it? It was the, my it was my version of hiding, which is like, well, I don't want it. No, that's for them. I'm more of a uh. yeah. So uh, it was, and it also would have been harder to just be a comedian than writing Why? for. I mean, it would have been harder in certain ways and easier in other ways. Harder in that I would have just had to like start from square one with writing with i was writing for tv shows i wrote for mtv singled out of course wrote for all that on nickelodeon um but if i had been a comedian i would have had to go like open mics whereas as a writer i was like doing pretty well okay doing like not bad and then me and dave wrote half bake so it was that was like another sort of like level up but how do you approach the comics that are at the club with hey i'm gonna write i would just i just would say like i said to dave dave recalls it of me telling him a, and him being like wincing because yeah. when you it's like hey unsol it's just unsolicited advice yeah so uh wincing but like it was pretty a uh, pretty good idea so it was like uh, like he could like oh, okay and then we we would do it you know we were like friends so it'd be like hey i saw that joke maybe uh, um and then half baked and then that didn't do well so we I love of, that movie thank you very much I wish it thousands uh, and thousands did you of help times. Dave with Nutty mm -hmm. Professor not a word of it I saw him that night and he was like yeah I just did this scene and like with and he's there and he's fat and I said like who's sucking who's titty <laughs> I he told me what he said and I was like oh that's yeah. really funny I never thought it would be in the movie, if that makes sense. I was like, that's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. a fucking kind of a crazy joke, but they used it. Um, and uh, and then and then we we did have baked, and then that didn't do good. So we kind of like there was a little fissure, and and then we came back together for the TV show. But in that time, I was writing movies that didn't get made with a guy named Mike Sure, who created Parks and Rec and Good Place, and he's gone on to do great stuff. So uh i've been lucky to work with good people and then the but once wait, but so when you you came back together with dave and then you guys were like okay we're gonna do tv show yeah a tv show we're gonna do playboy after Skit dark that's what wanted. got it uh and i then, got i i i got invited i think i told you this a long time ago but i got invited to the premiere of one of the first episodes yeah I, yeah and it was such a random invite back then well there was no it wasn't it was also she was really disorganized like do you know remember like sure but but I, I wasn't really on the radar of that kind of those kind yeah. of invites at the time so i was like oh someone actually is asking for me not because they put it out to a pool of publicists or whatever like someone in, yeah in that i camp would assume yeah because like, dave oh, was we want, dave yeah. skated and, dave skated yeah and in fact i skated with him when i was like 30 and uh fell <laughs> at a down a ramp i went down a, i was just going down ramps Hell yeah and um and uh and i fell and landed on my lip tooth went through the lip oh and then there was a baby i'm kidding and uh <laughs> and then and decided to get stitches and it was all you shouldn't start skating when you're <laughs> was that a, was that a when you're 30 for your skateboard career that was more or less the end all right that was pretty it didn't seem that much fun after that although the fact that i was going down ramps is insane but you know you kind of go oh, i guess i can do this it happens and i kind of could if it's not your life and you go through a traumatic experience on it a lot of people decide that that'll do yeah, yeah. whereas you guys you started when you were a kid yeah but it was different you know like i my, it was my whole life i had no i couldn't see my life without it so by the time i broke something i was like well Right, how long was, until i can get it to work again so i can skate there was no you know you should really contemplate i remember younger a guy that skated for at least four or five years and he broke his ankle twice and he was like i'm done and i remember you know i was drunk but i was like what you know what are you what is wrong with you what do you mean you're done like it's just two broken ankles like big deal yeah and, and then i was like well, yeah dude he's not like now when i look at him like it wasn't yeah, his sense whole lot yeah, it was a good idea yeah hey jason yeah mate fall is right around the corner and hello fresh is here to help you plan for the busy season ahead with tasty dishes delivered straight to your door banish the end of summer blues with hello fresh no need to stress about how you'll handle it all this fall because hello fresh takes care of the meal planning and delivers pre-portioned ingredients right to your home so whipping up a homemade meal is a 
cinch. Yeah, man. Hella fresh. It's like saves time and it's got all the cool ingredients, all fresh ingredients. It's good. And then you can have dates and you look like you're sophisticated. What ingredients? Potatoes and steaks and like all the vegetables and stuff. And they're fresh. Get it? Mozzarella crusted chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like shrimp risottos and stuff. A bunch of stuff. So go to HelloFresh.com slash HVW50 and use code HVW50 for 50% off plus free shipping. America's number one meal kit. Well, all right. Well, you said something earlier that I wanted to ask you about. And you can probably from the same point of view, the thing of putting skating too high on your priority list. I would assume you also see the upside of that. Uh, of course. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of career, yeah, an opportunity. But, but that's like a good, a, having a good career is very <laughs> yeah. important. There, Yeah, well, there's or, a lot, there's a sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifice right. involved in that. And for sure, you know, my but, relationships but fell apart because you, of it. It's not your sacrifice. Um. <laughs> it, it is to an extent. I mean, but you know, at, at, and then as I have kids through those years, yeah, yes, and, that's. A, I would say that you know, a and and just being present, like literally present, yeah, or, or being tra or traveling, that became an issue as well. Um, I you know, I learned to, I learned to uh, balance it later on, but not in those days. Once people were in their twenties, but it was also it was like it was like we grew up at a time when skating was not cool. There were there were no opportunities. It was really difficult to make a living. And suddenly these opportunities started coming. How could I ever say no to yeah. any of them? Having yes. been, having struggled for, for so long to provide for a family. So now it's like, oh, now I can provide in droves. So now I have to jump at every single thing. And then at some point I was just lost in it. Yeah. I including up to when we met, you know what I mean? Like I, I didn't really need to go to the Video Music Awards yeah. in Miami, but I was invited and they were going to put me on stage for a second. It was like, yeah, I got to go. Yeah. I got to go mingle. I got to go do all the things. Do you, are you like that? Well, because I mean, if you write and I'm you're clearly a comedian. I'm asking it for a reason. No, I, I've come to the conclusion like the, with my standup, it's been kind of about the, it's been about like clinical depression and shit like that. But and and also not being married, not having kids. And I just realized like a month or two ago in therapy, I was like, you know what? I care about comedy more than relationships. Yeah. And it was it was liberating. Because yeah. I'm not gonna You know who you are. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna uh the tension of it is I'm not gonna feel bad about that anymore. Not mm -hmm. like again, and I'm I say this uh, trying to do it in a victim-free way. I'm not saying it like, well, that's but also your you, problem, but you don't baby. Have the, I don't have emotional uh, dependence, so to sure. speak. And but you not, don't have the fallout of you know, kids and divorce and all that yeah. stuff, too. So that's that's the kind of thing where that, that lingers that you want to rectify. Correct. But you don't have that. You have the luxury of not having that. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I am all in on comedy. That's yeah, it. and like, yeah. And, and, it's, and the thing I was going to say to you guys is like, you got better at it at at the thing about the difference between comedy relationships to me is like i've gotten way better at comedy yeah <laughs> see, you're saying you, yeah. even with the therapy you haven't yeah. got better at relationships ah uh, you know i mean you're on your way if you can say that you know what you are and like because i feel like I, I just got divorced and, and i've been doing stand-up for four almost five years and now i'm out all the time and now i'm single and meeting people and i'm like Wait, that sounds exhausting. I don't have any time to meet you. Like, if and if I do, it's like I can meet you from seven to eight thirty. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, who wants to go out with a guy that's going to give you like an, an hour, hour and a half, half or yeah. two and a yeah. half hours for like three days a week? Yeah, that's what I have to offer. And yeah. if I'm doing stand up all the time and all this other stuff, like uh, it's the same. Like skateboarding, stand up, same thing to me. I got bit by it, and now I can't get it out of my head. So They're when I get home, incredibly similar. I've all always I'm doing when I skated about with Dave, I was like, "This is stand up. It's the same to me. The mechanism is the exact same. Yeah, your body is like, please don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> yes. no, 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 don't do this. Don't <laughs> yeah, do this. Wow. Don't, no, 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 yeah. no. There's a thing in stand up where, and I don't. If you've experienced, I'm sure you've experienced it. You've experienced a version of it when you are about to go on stage and your body's like, you got to take a piss. 
Oh yeah. You got to piss. You got to yeah. piss really bad. You got to piss. Yeah. You got to piss, and you're like, I can't piss. Yeah. You go on stage, do your act, and you, don't you get piss when you get off. Yeah, yeah, that was me. At, that was me at X Games. Oh really? Yeah. Right before we went out, I I I seriously peed like three times in an hour. Yeah. Before, and you go in and the nothing best happens. Yeah, I mean something en enough to justify it, yes. But was then it? afterwards, okay. like I don't drinking all the water i'm fine which yeah. x games the 900 one no this no, last, last one, one. I was oh, we competed we weeks ago. yeah oh you oh you yeah. were you were worried about broadcasting i was i skated in it too oh great, great, great. yeah so, but he wasn't worried about that he was worried about the broadcast no no i was worried about the skating oh really yeah 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 oh yeah. that was that why? was when i was because i uh you put pressure uh just the way it all transpired um <laughs> they kind of threw in a a new um feature on the ramp at the last minute and I already had something else planned. So I was like, oh, that changes everything. I got to figure out what to do there. And then, then I can start getting nervous. Are you a planner like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you, did you, did well, you ever I, feel- I try to be. I mean, sometimes if things go well and I meet my expectations, then I have freedom to, like when I did 900, like I did not plan that at all, but I had reached the highest level of the trick I had planned before that. And I didn't know where else to go. So then I started trying this trick I'd never done before. Had you done a 900 in your life before? No. No, what I got close. The, I got super did close. Did you feel like, was there something in you that was like, I can do it today? I can do it right uh, now? After a few tries, yes. But like, that's a big the stage first few to try, be trying The first few tries, I've said this before, but the first few tries that in that moment, in that event, were more for show because the the actual MC was saying, "Let's see a 900, like let's see the attempt." And so then I attempted, like, "There you go, that's what it looks hey. like." Yeah, like, ta-da! We'll be right back. And that's what. And then and then after about three of those, something clicked where I was like, "Oh, I'm I'm consistent with this tonight." Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm closer. I'm as close as I've ever been, and I have the energy to keep it going. So that's how. How do you? This is a, a very technical question that may not be answerable. On the attempt that did it what did you tell yourself and what adjustment did you make to me uh, i shifted my weight more to my back foot mid spin and um and tried to figure out how to recover from from my um the compression the landing the landing yeah because i didn't land standing up so i had i compressed my knees and so i knew i had to somehow recover from that but the way that I shifted my weight was just enough that I could kind of put my hand down and bounce back up. But that's not beforehand. No, 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 no. That's all. So, that's so all going like in real down, time. Okay. Making those adjustments. Yeah. And what? And so the the I guess the ahead of I didn't, time. I didn't. I would like I didn't plan to put my hand down. That just happened instinctively. I say I don't consider it a nine hundred because you put your hand. Down. <laughs> Some people do say that. They should um, shut up. I managed to figure it out later and do it standing up. Um, but uh, my first few were like that. It was impossible. That day, I was like, good well, for we, you, like, you're there, trying it. There was a group of us that had been trying it for the better yeah. part of like five years. There was a bunch of us that had spun it. And, I and cried watching it in the documentary. <laughs> I, I'm not <laughs> even kidding. Like, I, it's like a real, I can't, I can't think of a, it's like a, it's like Rocky or something. Yeah. He opened the door for like all of us that were there. I was announcing, I wasn't even in the contest. And when he did it, I was like, you can do it. Like he did it. Yeah. But uh, uh, two other, like, two other skaters did it the same year. Before you? No, 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 no after, after, after Because he did it. Yeah. Cause Isn't it was literally weird? like when he was trying to land it, I was like, man, that looks so close, but it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. so crazy that he almost rolled away. And then when he did roll away, I was like, what the f what just happened is it explainable the difference between a 720 and 900 like like is what it explainable it, meaning explainable from what you have to think of as you're doing yeah it. yeah well they're very different because a 720 you come up the wall backwards so your takeoff is is a lot different but on a 720 you only have to be blind to the ramp one time on 900, you have to be blind to it twice. So there's a lot more in the feeling and the um, the sense of spatial awareness mm -hmm. it is is much different on that. It's like you take off, you're not seeing anything, 
but you just know that your takeoff was okay. Yeah. So all systems go, even though you're spinning into oblivion and everything's blurry, you're like, takeoff was good. Let's wait till the wall comes back around, make sure it works out. 720 is the final wall. 720 is is more like you can adjust it in real time when it's happening and see it. You can. (laughs) It's the landing, it's the final descent wall, right? Yeah. Because because you have to know that you've spun enough and you have to know that you're out of the wall enough so you're not gonna hang up on the coping on the top. Because you're dead. Right. And that happens a lot. That's bad. That's That's nasty, I would think. That's real bad. And do you, is it, Jason, as someone who's done both, or you, I mean, I guess broadcasting isn't not stand-up, but there's a description of stand-up in Steve Martin's book called Born Standing Up. It's the first two pages, maybe first three pages, and it's the best description I've ever read of doing stand-up. Yeah. Where he talks about how you're talking, you're talking, and and the inner, I always say doing stand-up is like peering out a periscope where you're talking and you're like talk, you know doing your act and you're also doing diagnostics at the same time yeah where you're going like what the fucking don't mumble this yeah don't mumble you mumble this punchline <laughs> how fast because skating from the outside oh. uh, the, at that level just looks like you fling yourself and then who knows what i like you it most of very 80%, calculated most but 80 percent of it seems to be fr- in the first in the launch right Sure, Am I wrong? But, but that comes with experience, and and if you get a bad takeoff, you instinctively know. Yep. Yeah, and you just you Fail. you can make Fail adjustments. Up. Yeah, you can make adjustments. The older you get, the less adjustments you can make. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. it's so not actually that know, funny at all. But yeah. Well, right, no, right. you know, you, you know, you, it's something's pretty gone depressing. Wrong, yeah. yeah, but you're unable yeah. to make that adjustment necessary. What yeah. age it, does that start happening? 15. Well, it happened to me <laughs> at age fifty three when I broke my femur. Sure, yeah. but. That seems like it must have happened way before. Like uh, there were tricks that I had to let go of for sure, where I was just like, I can't, I'm not capable of of that uh, intricacy anymore yeah. or that speed. And it comes down to like bones, ligaments, speed. Uh, agility. Got yeah. it. It's less about Fast that. Fast like, So there's, yeah, yeah, so there's no, it's like basketball, you can get smarter. Yes. And play, but it seems like with skating, it's like. Well, you're not playing anyone. So you can't right. like, uh, you know, yeah, block them or so you set them up yeah. like this. You, you know, like in boxing, you can <laughs> yeah. do that, but not yeah, in skateboarding. I wish we could. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, okay. So that's but to that's answer your question. It slows down because I feel it it down, in yeah. comedy where I go, uh, there's something I'm saying or something I'm about to say, and the last time I said it, I didn't do it right, and I made a note to make sure you do it right while I'm telling the story. Yeah, which means. It must have slowed down dramatically because I'm having two conversations. You know, yeah. One in my head and one to the people. And in skateboarding, same as car crashes because I race cars and stuff, that's where I noticed it. When things get real heavy and it's about to hit the fan, everything slows down. Yeah. And that what that made me realize it's from skateboarding because when things get really critical, you do it so many times, you try it so many times that you you can play it slow in your head when it's happening. You know, like when when it gets to the crunch time, like I've got to get that tail to land on that one piece of coping or I'm dead. That little bit right there seems to have slowed down in my head. Like I see it slowly. But, hit. And, and at the same time, you're less agile. So you may be able to diagnose it, but you can't necessarily get your leg to oh, do the thing. It's way more. It's yeah, terrifying. It's, it's not like we're going to learn these tricks at our age for the first time. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing these tricks because we've just been We've had so much experience with them that we know the minor adjustments it would take yep. and how to do them even when our reaction time is slow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and, you know, there's not there's not some new technique that we're developing now where we're like, oh, I'm nah. gonna try that one. Like, nah. And it's, the, it's the, the watching the skating ones. documentaries, it seems like there it almost feels like there's a contract with d- doing this till you die for a lot of guys. I mean, or, or, or come I, on, I, I, out of I, anybody I to- in the world. I know, I totally agree. My <laughs> the I would say the difference is in stand up. There's George Burns and fucking like people, Rodney Dangerfield, people that did it until they died, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying it seems like the level of destruction 
personally sure is greater and maybe it's just drug it, it use. is it's great yeah, yeah. that's different and maybe it's drug use maybe it's a bunch of shit but that's but, why i like comedy if you do bad you don't go to hospital ever no <laughs> well well, you'd have to do really bad. Yeah, yeah. You'd, have to, you'd have to do. You'd have to do a yeah. line after your first yeah, special, or or, or yeah. not have the proper security. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, on stage. Yeah. Dave and Chris would tell you some maybe. Okay, well, that, I'm not trying to be that kind of comedian. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the whole bit where it's like, man, that was the worst night of my life, and then I wake up in the morning, I'm like, new day. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not. You don't. It's, no, it's you not don't, the best, but it's, you don't get it if it's bad enough. It'll last until the all day the next yeah, day. Yeah, maybe a week. I feel yeah. like I've had that, but it's, yeah. but when you go to hospital, Doesn't require surgery, you know, and then yeah. they give you painkillers and you go rehab and and you do it like, you know, 50 times, you start to get really sick of it. You know, like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, man, I love skateboarding, but I do not love hospital. And it's inevitable. It's, like, it's uh, just, yeah, it's not a matter of if it's yeah. a matter of when. Yeah. 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 Although some people get lucky, like Eric Austin. Yeah. They had a, yeah, every now and then there's a guy, but that's yeah. one guy out yeah, of millions. And what does that mean? No, 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 he, no concussion. I, no. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, he said he on, kind he kind of got a concussion one time. Yeah, and, and he almost and like, hit his head. And to be in the game for that long and be that level, because he's the highest level and has been yeah, for, yeah. for decades. And to say one time I almost yeah, got like, knocked. Yeah, like, I rolled him, my ankle. He and I yeah. don't know how many times yeah. we've been. Yeah. I down. iced my ankle once. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's like, pretty much it. That's Eric Carlson. Yeah. But I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, so on your show, Blocks, which we saw. Yeah, you saw live and I saw uh, you got the and, bonus package. Okay, we so Kathy and I were in New York. We, yeah. we, we went to his show, got invited to his show. And then after the show, we met up and he's like, hey. You, you didn't guys... get invited. You came. Oh, you we bought, bought tickets. tickets. That's right, we bought tickets. But you didn't I invite me. I specifically didn't invite him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made a he point. Shows, I kind of, right? Every time I tried to hit purchase You're, yeah. under my name, it yeah. wouldn't work. Yeah, exactly. Under someone and else's name, it would yeah. work. No, you did it. You you told me when you first started. You're yeah, like, yeah. If you're ever in New York, come see it. Yeah, so we yeah. just bought tickets. I just yeah. I wasn't trying to be obnoxious. So yeah, fantastic. We bought tickets. You you met us after the show, and then it's a Saturday night, and he's like, and he goes, "Hey, do you guys want to go to Saturday Night Live?" Huh. we're like, pretty nice. Yes yeah we would love to do that he's like well I, I still have some friends there and then an hour later he texts me like you guys are in just go to the yeah to the front pretty and pretty pretty good jason package. sudeikos was the host pretty nice. it was amazing it pretty was great. very powerful yeah. I, i'm a pretty feel to be that powerful <laughs> it was pretty it was pretty well i mean it feels great i'll be honest with you, it feels great right. yeah um uh no i didn't I don't know why I asked that. It just seemed like you because were in you're New incredibly York. incredibly powerful. I think. Right, but, but it was exactly York, that time. It was like Saturday night. And it night, was like, it, it was, was Saturday like 7 night, o'clock. Like, and you yeah. know, they, they go live. Or, yeah. I don't remember. It was, it was so 8 or 9 o'clock. Maybe somebody else and it was, I don't know what made me ask, but I was like, and I assumed you'd host it. No. I can like picture you hosting. I never, I never even been to the set. I know. Wait, but, but I, you've been on it. No, since then. All right. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Uh, thanks to me. <laughs> yes. It, probably. Probably. Yeah. I planted the seed. Um, but what I wanted to ask you about from that was if if you're doing that show night after night, I mean, how many years have you been doing it now? I'm done with that show. You're I done did with it. that show. Yeah. Okay. I did but that. when you were doing it, yeah. was it hard for you to feel like you were sounding fresh every night? Yeah. It wasn't that hard in that. Because I, yeah, I, I know is, one thing about stand up, and he's spontaneous, and there's improv. Yeah, but you were using all of these. I had to. The there were two things about that show. One of them was a follow spotlight cost five thousand dollars a week. So I'm like, I'm not getting. I'm not what? spending five just to rent a follow spot. Wow, was five thousand dollars <laughs> insane? That, that's right? not even. I agree. It might have been more. I'm I it might have been nine thousand. I'm saying I remember five, it might have been nine. So the lights were set up where they were like I had to be in certain parts of the stage. Yes, I yeah. had to be in certain parts of the stage at a certain time. Right. So somebody did a review and said like my very deliberate pacing. I was like, it's cause I don't want to get a follow spot. Yeah. So they would I would have to be over there oh, that's interesting. in three seconds. People yeah. commented or, on your pacing. Yeah, of course. No, I know. It's it's so aggravating. It's like because I didn't fuck. So uh <laughs> otherwise I'd be in darkness. Totally technical. I'd just be like moving naturally yeah. instead of like like a fucking monk. Um, so there was that. And then the with the thing about stand-up is 
and any show like that is you don't know which parts are going to work so you have to it wasn't like i'll be over here that'll do great and then i'll go right. over here people are going to love that that's it's weird. like every time you don't know that's way more stress yeah it's so stressful. were you fine tuning it every night or changing absolutely it every night? yeah and yeah. also you're gauging the the audience the audience of like yeah. oh, this fucking not working okay right let me yell a little bit let me fucking amp it up a little bit let me what like the adjustments i was making were like that that keeps it interesting it keeps it from being uh kind of like wrote and like uh mum, mum, like yeah. you're not mum. there's a funny story mike nichols the guy who who's a he was a big director and he directed like the graduate and shit but he directed spam a lot the yeah. the monty python musical but he said a funny thing that when he the way he like rehearsed it he he let them do it for like they did the show for six weeks on broadway and when and he like let he didn't go right he like okay this is the show best of luck he let him do it for six weeks. when he came back all the actors had moved a foot and a half closer to the audience because they just wanted the juice and he was like get the fuck back because <laughs> you just get like you're you're that's the only thing that's new is the mm. audience so you're like everybody the whole one cast member moves forward and then all of them move forward like <laughs> well i'm not gonna let you be close to the audience so that they technically hear your joke a quarter of a second before mine and you get the laugh response i didn't have any of that shit but i because i couldn't go past a certain point but but you, yeah. you, you said that sometimes when you're you're doing stuff you feel like you uh, yelling like you're sensing to the crowd if you were louder that that would get them into it yeah jason absolutely i'm sorry i'm still really no new. i know that's what i'm saying like there's things mulaney opened for berbiglia and berbiglia is like 15 years ago berbiglia's note was faster louder <laughs> Just like it, you're, it's real basic shit. It's basic human. I mean, this is, I've told the story before, but the reason Chris Rock paces the way he does is because Eddie Murphy told him, if you just stand there, the audience doesn't have to look at you. Right. So that oh. Eddie would like gallop between jokes, yeah. like a little da da da, plant da 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 da, little pace over here. Huh? just back and forth and chris took it to like it's just and that's before phones too so now the being it but getting people to look at you is it's you have to use like every trick in the book and yeah. it really comes down to like a weird sort of animal thing of like he might attack me yeah so i need to i need you need to be like arresting and shit like i was saying to uh, me and santino were talking about it last night me and santino both kind of bombed last night right yeah right i swear i mean not like it never happened but right. like we just didn't the comedy store was a tough crowd we both kind of ate shit he left in a huff he ate shit so <laughs> bad you guys like, still do that yeah, of course he I like that, he I was know. upset so sick. <laughs> yeah Look, he was like right upset there. me You're and seinfeld pocket. bombed back to back one night at the improv really what? and like to the point where i was like can you, do you ever worry about not being able to follow your intro and he goes oh yeah i think that just happened man like, i feel so much better right now yeah dude like it never <laughs> ends that's the he, thing is like he bombed i what heard the? tony hawk broke his femur skating yeah, i was once. there for that i was thinking the same thing what the hell just happened <laughs> yeah like you don't fucking no um but yeah you'd never and you never stop so it's just like hold the mic further away from your mouth and yell yeah. Just there's shit you can do to make yourself a better performer. Have you done that and just noticed the crowd shift? Yes. <sighs> Absolutely. Dude, I was doing a joke that I'm doing now. It's about the 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 Last Dance Bulls documentary, right? Mm. I was last summer, because it was fresher in people's minds, I could just bring it up and do the joke. It's just started doing 12% worse this this summer because it's out of sight out of yeah, mind it's just that, too that much docs. time has passed uh, and i remembered watching me and chappelle used to go watch paul mooney all the time who we ended up having on the show and he would do a thing he would do these sets of carolines uh in new york 
like midnight Saturday. They were like, they were like church revival meets like a beauty salon. And, and so Mooney would do a thing where, he, and me and him would make fun of it, where he'd go like, what's that girl's name? She's uh, over in England. Where's the crown? Oh yeah, the queen. And it's like <laughs> everyone knew who the you could just say the queen, yeah. but by getting them involved, yeah. somehow. So I started saying, "What documentary did we all watch during COVID?" <laughs> yeah, The Last Dance. That's right. And then I do the bit, and it's doing as well as it did last year. Just the oh, dumbest. Wow. The dumb, that's why stand up so impossible. Yep. Similar to thing of like you got to worry about your launch and your back leg and eh, and shit that as a viewer i'm like i don't know where your fucking leg weight is mm -hmm. i'm just i just see like yeah. i'm like what but he landed it but and if we it. heard that joke we would forget that you even brought it up like you that. would have no idea but there's just these weird little like i don't even think it's neuro-linguistic programming but these little primes that are so like you wouldn't even think about them but they're and crucial to everyone's the not everyone's doing them but dave does a lot of them like he does a lot of like yeah. dramatic things that you wouldn't notice watching you'd never you go oh, right. it's natural no it's all <laughs> it's all not like he's up he was, there being we, calculated i saw him in anaheim on the last tour with with chris rock and yeah. we went on this tangent about coming up with movie ideas or movie titles did you, yeah. you seen that no. a little bit and then he just went he leaned into it and just went hard and it was just like and then we were just on his journey of it yeah and at some point it was like is he gonna stop doing that like <laughs> was he calling it back he kept calling he kept no he just kept doing it he didn't bring it back like he just kept doing he it, for leave it longer what than, were the what was the premise of the i can't remember it was something about was it know, working was, some of them but then but at some point it just felt like it was his personal enjoyment yeah to to drag you into this and to just keep spouting these i think it was like taking existing movie uh arcs story arcs or something and, and making them more black oh yeah, yeah, yeah. does that, that sound makes familiar sense. Yeah, that sounds like him yeah um and it was funny but at some point he's it, it, like all right one more <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah it becomes like a weird tick thing uh, but but there's also that element of comedy where it's just for their like like louis ck has said you know i'm just doing this because i enjoy making you uncomfortable yeah yeah i'm not like, and money and for fame my yeah. attention <laughs> that, yeah that all i was thing. just gonna leave they it don't all. they don't they never bring that up yeah, yeah. huge right, part right, of it yeah like the 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 i it's like when people go i like pushing buttons no you're kind of an asshole right yeah you know what i mean like no you're just that's what your personality is and then you work backward from what do i like doing but at one um, point is is there i don't know i mean it's, at some point it's got to be some self-indulgent where it's just like oh you're just doing that because well if it doesn't you the like that comedy you can the if audience it doesn't and, work it's not yeah. really comedy right that's the great thing it's like if then it's just a speech <laughs> yeah i hadn't thought about it like that yeah like then it's if you don't if there's no if they're not laughing i one time when i first started doing stand-up i went in like the early 2000s i was at dinner with a bunch of people and i was like oh there was a club nearby and i was like i might go on there was an australian guy and i'm not putting this in all australians no, but, we're annoying go ahead yeah no but the guy this is 2003 was he drunk no huh. and uh so maybe he wasn't maybe he was from new zealand right. um so <laughs> the the uh but i do a set doesn't go especially well but it was fine and we leave the restaurant and the australian guy goes what was that he'd never seen stand-up before <laughs> wow so but the idea that there are people that have never seen it well the funny thing about saying is Pete, a lot of people don't even really like it right like, like they just are like oh, it's kind of annoying that what well, in that steve martin book i read that book too yeah. where he said one of his first times doing stand-up there was a guy sitting close to the stage and was like i don't get this yeah yeah people but don't loud understand that still happens him to hear yeah yeah and they don't somebody santino was saying last night about our horrible set no some a woman was like oh no yeah at one of his jokes early yeah they, everybody was laughing she goes oh no and he's like just felt so bad yes <laughs> oh hard. man it feels like that happened to me i told you in new york <laughs> yeah new york, i never yeah. did stand up in new yeah. york and i went yes. there the other day because we did podcasts and i was really nervous because i'm in a different city yeah and i got out there and started doing my stuff he has and a very one, specific brand of comedy sure one girl in the front was just like oh no like absolutely <laughs> not and i was like wait you're 
You're not with me. You can, wait, you're. I can't say this. Like, am I am I offending you directly? Because I'm not talking about you. Like, doesn't it was, matter. And then it just turned into I did 15 minutes to this lady. I couldn't not do it because I was like, why are you so mortified? Everybody has buttholes. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, because I was talking about butthole stuff. Sure, of course. But she was just so offended by. That's where we started. This I podcast. know. It all, we come full, full circle. We come full, Get it. full butthole. I, I have a question though. Hecklers and your style of stand up. The uh, the most recent the 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 jokes about uh, guns. Yeah. That that whole nobody ever heckled. You because they they don't what they they wouldn't even come to your show because I feel like these days there are people that come that aren't on your side. Like they might come just to sort of I've seen annoy people. You. I mean, part of it is like I'm talking about. You know what's funny is I have a joke about COVID and Joe Rogan, a friend of mine, yeah. done his podcast a dozen times. Like yeah. known him for thirty years, always been great. I and even like the shit he gets in trouble for. I'm like Joe's not a liar. Joe's not stupid. Joe's not doing it for attention. Like he, if he believes something, he'll talk about it. Right. I was talking about the I was talking about vaccine COVID shit. I've the heard. only time I got in trouble, not even in trouble, the only person who heckled was in Thailand. Uh, <laughs> because it was just like an American expat in Thailand, and he just started yelling like, "Doctor Fauci, oh. fuck you, Fauci!" <laughs> he just oh started yelling, God. "Fuck That's you, Fauci!" Was, that is the last place you would have. Expected I know it was anything. so, and the Thai people are uh, like scared because some white lunatic is screaming at a comedy they show, so is. they don't know who to fucking interview. Yeah, it's like yeah. Fauci's not the head of the earth. <laughs> yeah, um, but that's the only like not even bad heckle. It felt I felt bad for the crowd, right? Because like I don't, I mean, not like I don't care, but it was just a weird. It was also like I'm friends with Joe. What the? Who are you yelling at? Yeah, like it was just people get. Certain things when you talk about it, people just get the thing with the gun thing. The most heckles are just in the comments, right. and they're not even in the. It's no one has a clear take on it. People go, "That's actually not in the First Amendment." And then I posted, or no, the Second Amendment. Uh, I posted a link to the Second Amendment. Like, no, it's to create a militia. Yeah, and then they never respond. Right, because I feel like your joke, it's it's funny, but it's also explain in a way where where yeah that's it's factual that that's that is what it is yeah you're that's gonna a really get good point there's no argument to it by the military what's that the, if you try to fight the american military you're gonna get vaporized yeah and have they go that? well have you seen his joke about you saw it, I, it I, was no, the saw one, yeah the, the nra military one it's amazing but and now i have a joke about people's response to it because like the, there are guys like as a proud member of the nra i like our chances against the military <laughs> Like what? <laughs> what? What in the? And these are the same guys that like Fourth of July are like those are b bravest fighting force on earth, the American military, except uh. for me, my boy CJ and Daryl. <laughs> we can take them. But yeah, that's like the the they don't un and then they go well Afghanistan did it. Yeah, they lived in caves. If you want to live in a cave, yeah. yes, you could technically outlast the American outlast, military. Yeah, not, not but you're not. Beat but, them. You're but not beating. They're them. not. Where's American gonna? Where are they gonna retreat to? Right. It's America. They can't go anywhere. So in Afghanistan, they were just like, you know what, Afghanistan, we're gonna we're gonna declare this a tie. <laughs> you're up there with Vietnam and Afghanistan, uh, and of course Iraq. We, that was a tie. That was a fam one of our famous ties. Uh, and we're going to get out of here. But America, you, they're just going to, yeah. it's easier when there's no, no infrastructure. Like the, then it's very easy to tie mm. America Yeah. or, and you, if you want to live in a cave, but like, what are you going to, if you want sovereign land with no, uh, if you want a part of America that's got so, that's sovereign territory, that's got no resources, no sewage, no electricity. Yes you can beat the american military no netflix in the cave no netflix then nothing no song it wouldn't take yeah. once they see that uber doesn't work you'd be like this is right. stupid no one's picking them up you know what i like and they wouldn't be government. able to watch your specials they would you know what that's, that's the, the biggest the tragedy of biggest, it all yeah that's the and they wouldn't be able to watch this commit. podcast they wouldn't be able to watch jason do stand-up on wherever you're streaming <laughs> not, jason. Ready, not ready yet but not, yeah 
Monday. Yeah, yeah, good. Well, you're realistic about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't have a... Uh, I've been good at things before. So I, I know... I, I don't want to be... It's cool that you have specials and you're famous and stuff. I've been there. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I want to be good at comedy. That's all I want from it. And I'm very respectful to everybody in it because I know that you're a new guy and you need to pay your dues. And you got kind of fancy shoes on because you're a skateboard guy. You're getting little hole passes. So I'm very... Like when the light goes, I don't, I mean, I don't do any TI shit where I go for like another 15 minutes because I think I'm shit hot. I don't do any of that. I'm always very nice. Always asking for, for advice because like you just, the thing you did before talking about being louder and stuff, I'm, I can't wait to go on stage right now and try. <laughs> use the, use I just, the I'm going to, I'm walking, I'm oh, going to yeah. be walking. I'm going to do, like I'm, I'm using There's all that. There's so many things like that. Unlock the ancient secrets to him. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of, there's so many. Yes. But ironically enough, I sent the 900 sequence to Seinfeld. You did? Yes. Oh, like, wow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Sick. like it, because it's the, it's a weird thing, but he's obsessed with track and field. Mm -hmm. He's obsessed with the 100, 100 meters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Literally, obs it's all he cares about. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, no, with the stretching and the chains. Like he <laughs> talks about it. And Does I was he like, run? no, he just loves the, I think he loves it because it's like the, uh, the most analogous to stand up. Yeah. Um, it's like doing a TV set basically. Uh, but, but I knew he would, and I, I don't know if he ever watched it or not. Uh, never asked. Well, but, thank you. That's very yeah. cool. But I, I actually, was like, I saw him at, uh, this was a crazy time. I was with my family up here. My, my sister used to live in Westwood. We live in San Diego. We were up here for Thanksgiving. I want to say it was like 1988 maybe 89 and we had thanksgiving meal early and then my brother was like let's go to the improv because it's open and so we just went and it was just a random night seinfeld showed up joe piscopo showed up richard jenny yeah uh there was one other big comedian where it was like this is like the dream what is going yeah. on because they were bored yeah they were they were Thanksgiving in. and they were they yeah they were bored and we just like they we ate. just watched like the A list of yeah. comedy that that night yeah. it was amazing that's how I feel when I go to the comedy store every time I'm there somebody gigantic just walks by and I'm like holy yeah. shit Mark Maron's here and it, like I just creep it out. was weird because Seinfeld was I don't think his show was on yet right mm -hmm. he was in the 90s so Joe Piscopo came in who was not scheduled but he wanted to practice material for the Tonight Show. So they bumped everyone or let him go first. And yeah. I was like, how did he jump ahead of Jerry Seinfeld and Richard Jenny? Like, I don't get it. But yeah, that's he a was, tough one. That's he was a, bigger I, then because he was on yeah. SNL. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. that oh. that was the pecking order. But yeah. I guess he was like a TV star and those guys were like, yeah, it was. Dudes. Anyway, that's my that's my weird flashback. Um, yeah, no, I any Jason, you have any other questions? <laughs> No, I'm, but Stan, any we're tutorials? Out of time. Yeah. Oh, are we really? We are. Yeah, I, don't know, I think I we. Look. I think we we filled it real nice. But, yeah, I yeah. don't want to learn no, any, de no dead zones. If you give me any more information, the first bit might leak out because I hit my head a lot. So let's just stay here. Oh, so you want me right. to tell like, you again forget. about? If you give me any yeah, more points, I'm going to lose the first one. Little little bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you in a couple months, and then you can give me yeah. another couple of gems. I'll be like, move, do stuff with your hands. Like what? You know, Tony, you know you Tony, can move your hands. He's going to ruin me. I'm going to stop doing this. You're going to start doing Ricky Bobby. What is Jason doing? I don't know what to do with my hand. Like, is hey, this everybody. comedy? Is this funny? Am I doing yeah, it? Basically, yeah. I'll try it. Um, well, thank you for imparting your wisdom. Of course. It yeah, was man. great to be here. I'm your a, I, you're, you're, both, uh, you're both good boys. Appreciate it. Me Sometimes, and Tony are doing a crossover. He's going to come do my podcast blocks. Now streaming. Surprise I pay, Jason. Surprise I pay. Yeah. I just want to say thanks for being so funny and, and giving the world your genius. Oh, thank you. Appreciate my, it's it. My pleasure. Inspirational it's my motherfucker. Pleasure. Bullshit. Yeah, Sorry. thank you. Been been a fan of your work since since yeah. we met. Since before we met. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, and vice versa. Appreciate so, it. Right back at you. All right. That's yeah. it, everyone. Like, like and describe. describe. Blocks, Neil Brennan, his podcast too. And on Netflix. Animal Type effects. in NEA and you should, it'll, it'll come up. And not, you'll find them. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Google it. Bye.